Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, which I'm assuming a lot of you are new to this channel, my name is Daniel. I'm a part-time eBay reseller that focuses almost entirely on used golf clubs and golf bags. I've been selling on eBay for over three years in the golf niche. I think it is probably one of the most lucrative areas for new resellers or experienced resellers to take advantage of. And in today's video, I want this to be the definitive guide of how to correctly package, box, and ship your golf items that you're reselling on eBay. Okay, we are going to get right into it. Uh, full disclosure here at the beginning of this video, I have a link down below for two different size boxes. This is exactly where I buy my boxes from and it is an affiliate link. So if you do choose to buy boxes through that link, I do get a small kickback for you choosing those boxes. If you find them cheaper elsewhere, I absolutely recommend that you do that so that you keep your overhead cost as low as possible. But in my experience, this is probably the lowest price that you'll find in bulk for these boxes, uh, at least at the time of this video filming. I do also want to disclose that in my first six months of selling golf clubs, I got all of the boxes that I shipped my golf clubs in from the PGA store. So. I went in there, I would buy used clubs in there, and then I would go up to the player services department and ask them for different size boxes, either an iron box, a putter box, or a iron set box, or even a driver box. And it is a way to assure that your overhead cost for shipping is very low, as in that you're not having to buy any boxes because you could get them for free, but the risk here is supply. So especially if you're going for one day handling time after you sell something, you're at the mercy of a store having that correct size box and then if they don't have it you have to go buy a one-off box which will cost way more than buying boxes in bulk so after the first six months of my ebay reselling journey i switched to buying boxes in bulk because i did not want to be at the mercy of the pga store's uh, grace in giving me boxes that they were going to throw away or customers had opened up in the store, taking their clubs or items out that they had either gotten repaired or purchased and then leaving the boxes behind. So what I want to say is that there is a way out there to get free boxes, but once you start selling in significant volume, you put yourself at risk after a while. So the best thing to do is go out there and buy in bulk. So the first box size that I want to talk about today is 40 by four by four. So I use this box for putters, for wedges and then individual irons. I do not use this for iron sets. The box is too small for this. Last night I sold this tailor-made spider mini putter. I don't know if you can see that very well. In my three years of selling on eBay, this is the first spider putter that I actually have bought to resell because the paint on these putters is notorious for chipping. And this is the first one that I could find in decent shape i'll go ahead and throw the comps and exact information of what i made and sold this club for for the 40 by 4 by 4 box i charge 15 dollars flat shipping which leads me into my second point here if you are starting to resell golf clubs i highly recommend that you use calculated shipping when you're starting out only after my years of experience on ebay do i know that for a 40 by 4 by 4 with me living in texas that i can ship to almost anywhere in the continental us for less than 15 dollars. so that's why i have 15 dollars shipping i generally average between 8 to 10 dollars after utilizing ebay's discount for my shipping label and i end up making a couple extra dollars that pays for the box that i'm actually shipping in so the 40 by 4 by 4 i buy in uh, packages of 25 boxes from amazon it comes out to about two dollars 84 cents ish per box at least at the time of this recording so what i'm going to do with this putter is i'm going to bubble wrap the head of the club and also bubble wrap the grip of the club, if you can see from here, the grip on this club is very, very worn. But what I like to do is bubble wrap both ends because it does have a little bit of wiggle room in the box. And if it does bounce around, I don't want the buyer opening up the club and wondering, 
why I didn't protect uh, the grip of the club. So I'm doing everything that I can to bubble wrap the vulnerable area. So I'm gonna take a minute and bubble wrap the head and the grip and I will show you the box that I used. Okay, so I have bubble wrapped the head and the grip, and then here is my 40 by four by four. I've already sealed up this end. I'm gonna go ahead and throw uh, the putter in there. All I have left to do is tape up this side and then slap the label on. I do want to just take a second just to tell you that I go ahead and mark all of my 40 by four by fours as three pounds. I do not take the time to measure them because I know that nothing that I put in here will exceed those three pounds just from repetitions and doing it. Dropping it down lower than that generally does not change the cost that much. So I just put a straight three pounds on there. If you are going to be using boxes from the PGA store, I highly recommend that you get a heat gun to make sure that you take off all the existing labels without ruining the box that the PGA store has on there. They have anywhere from four to five labels on any of the boxes that they will give you with other people's information on there. I bought a heat gun, you heat up those labels and they peel off without tearing up the cardboard. And funny story, that's actually how I got this scar on my arm. It's from a heat gun that I put on my arm as I was trying to grab my like 10 month old son as he was getting into something on the ground. So fun story that I carry around with me there from my eBay reselling adventures. Um, I will go ahead and slap the label on this and then we will move on to the next club size which is a 48 by 6 by 6. so i use the 48 by 6 by 6 for either drivers hybrids or iron sets for iron sets i set the weight at nine pounds for drivers and hybrids i leave them at three pounds and what i want to caution you on is that i want you to cut down the boxes as much as possible so there is only probably half an inch between the butt of the grip and the top of the box because UPS, who I ship all of my clubs through, will charge you an arm and a leg and an overage fee if your box is anywhere close to 48 inches. The machines that they have, I would bet on the fact that they add some extra length to the boxes because I will get back charges from UPS if I have any box that gets close to 48 inches. So I do everything in my power to cut down these boxes once I get the club in there. So the club that I sold uh, last night is actually a club that you should be looking out for. Um, and that is, it looks like a driver, but it's actually a mini driver. So mini drivers are exploding in popularity right now. What it is, is it's the length of a driver with a smaller head on it. So it's a head that's in between the size of a like 460 cc driver or a three wood and it basically makes it easier to hit uh, the club face and control the drive so you don't have a slice um, so that way it's more accurate to get you down the fairway and you're not using as many strokes um, the newest ones are basically selling brand new right now for 360 plus dollars which is astronomical this is a very old mini driver, but it's sold for, I think, 265 or 275. I'll throw the comps on again, uh, but I bought it for about $175 plus tax. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna make sure I bubble wrap uh, the head, and I'm also going to bubble wrap the grip, and then I'll throw it in the box and be right back. So I did want to make sure that this part was clear when I said cut down a box. So I have the driver in here bubble wrapped, I have it in the box. And what I did uh, was cut around, uh, all the way around the top of the driver. And what I'm going to do is then take this part of the box and put it over it. So I'm essentially taking off this three inches or so to make the box a little bit shorter so that I don't get that nasty back charge 
from the UPS store. I'm not going to do that on camera because it would take me way longer with the stress of y'all potentially watching me, not even in real time, just knowing that y'all are going to be watching me do it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on here and tape it up and I'll show you what the final product looks like before we move on to the last box category. Okay, so I got this completely cut down and taped up. I took the four inches that we cut off, overlapped it with the box itself. So this actually measures now to 44 by six by six. So I'm in no danger of UPS hitting me with a back charge. It does look a little weird, but I've been doing this again for multiple years and I have never gotten a complaint as long as it gets there. Um, it's still, serving its job as a box, even though it looks like it's been through a little bit of history. So next up is the last thing that I'm going to share today, and that is how to ship a golf bag. So I don't do this very often. I only get golf bags when I buy a complete set or a uh, bunch of clubs off of Facebook Marketplace. Uh, and I'm basically making my money back on the clubs itself. I generally sell bags for close to $30 to $40 plus shipping, and I do charge $40 for shipping, and that's why I charge so little for the bags. I also generally do bags in an auction format. I sell all of my clubs in a buy it now or best offer, uh, but I do put the bags up for auction because it's probably the only thing that I see a lot of action on from the auction front as far as golf clubs go, unless it's a very rare club. Uh, so for boxes that I use to sell, this could not be in a more awkward place. This is a U-Haul 12 by 12 by 40 also known as the U-Haul lamp box. So what I do is I take the golf bag, uh, I'm going to wrap it in a black trash bag just to protect it from rubbing up against the side of the box. And I'm going to put it in the 12 by 12 by 40. I do go ahead and weigh this just so I know what the weight is. Put it in this box, I've sold tens to 20 golf bags over the past three years. I've never had an issue using this box as well. So I am going to throw it into this box. And then again, I'll be right back to wrap up the video. Okay, I got the golf bag boxed up in the lamp box. I do want to let y'all know that the lamp box costs about $6.52, which is expensive. But again, I charge $40 for shipping because one, it's a large box, two, it weighs a little bit. And then three, I want to cover the cost of my box purchase from the U-Haul store because I cannot purchase these in bulk. So $40 shipping covers all of that. And then some gives me a couple of dollars back at the end of all of that in my pocket. I do want to recommend that if you are a new reseller that you use calculated shipping. So when you're going onto eBay and you're listing an item, the buyer always pays. You want the buyer to pay for shipping and I want you to use calculated shipping until you can triangulate how much it costs for you in your area to ship either a 40 by four by four at three pounds or a 40, let's call it four if you cut it down by six by six for a driver until you know how much it costs you, use calculated shipping. It is going to make the buyer pay a little bit more, but as you get more comfortable with it and know where your price point is that you are going to pay after the eBay discount on shipping labels, then you can switch over to flat rate shipping and feel comfortable and that makes your uh, items a little bit more attractive as flat rate shipping is generally less expensive than calculated shipping, which then entices a buyer to choose your item against another if there is another one of the same item out there. When I started doing that, I saw a really big spike in sales, so I hope that passes forward to y'all as well. Again, if you wanna buy any of the boxes that I talked about except for the U-Haul box in this video, check out the link down below. I do get a little kickback for that. And I hope that you learned something from this video. If you did, hit a like and subscribe. If you have any questions about shipping, 
drop it down in the comments and I will answer every single comment that I can. If you are going sourcing this week, I hope you hit an absolute hole in one and find something to resell on eBay. And I will see you in the next video.